In one ear and out the other. It's a phrase that was first used in a Geoffrey Chaucer poem back in the 1300s, but more recently, it's been used by teachers across the world to reference that remarkable ability that a student has to leave the classroom after learning something and promptly forget all of it. Fortunately though, there is a way to help students remember things long term, and that's what we're gonna be looking at today in this video. It's called spaced practice. Hey there educators, my name is Mark and I'm a high school math teacher from Australia, but more importantly, I'm a lover of learning. And in this video today, I'm gonna to help you understand and learn the concept of spaced practice, sometimes also called spaced repetition or spaced learning. In essence, it kind of uses a combination of multiple exposures and also retrieval practice in order to to help students revisit topics so that they can learn it and retain the information for longer periods of time, which helps you avoid the dreaded statement of, you never taught us this. Now make sure you watch to the end of the video because I'm gonna be giving you three practical strategies that you can incorporate in your classroom tomorrow to help you implement space practice and help get the best retention for your students learning. And here is the most important part of this video and why space practice works as a learning technique the forgetting curve. Now the forgetting curve was first coined by this fella, Herman Ebbinghaus in 1885, and it's a visual representation of how much information is retained over time. Now you may be familiar with the forgetting curve already, but there are a couple of bits of information or misnomers about this forgetting curve that I just wanna quickly clear up. Now it is called the forgetting curve, but the y-axis in this graph actually represents the retention rate of information over time. And because time passes on the x-axis and the retention drops, it is this shape. If it was a forgetting curve, it would actually be the inverse and the amount of forgetfulness would rise over time, but nevertheless, less we call it the forgetting curve even though it models retention. And the other thing I want to clear up is that most people consider this curve to be exponential when in reality it's actually the inverse of exponential and is rather logarithmic in nature. It's not really that relevant but as a math teacher I thought it was important for me to clear that up. Now since Ebbinghaus completed his experiments on himself other people have created experiments to try and emulate his results and they have found that it's true. For example brief visual displays, auditory presentations of over four Four seconds, holding items in short-term memory while being distracted by another task, remembering lists of things over a period of days, and also remembering Spanish vocabulary over a number of years. Needless to say, it doesn't matter what type of information is being stored, it is lost at a logarithmic rate. There are many factors which influence the rate of forgetting over time. These can be things like the meaningfulness of the information, how it's presented to the student, have they got enough sleep, are they under any stress, what's their relationship like with the teacher, all of these things come into play. But as educators, we can't control all of them. We can't control how much sleep a student gets. We can't control how much stress they're under. But what we can control are things like the... Hey buddy, I'm trying to record here. Now as educators, we can control some factors like student relationships or how the information is portrayed, but many of them are way out of our control. So in the next section, I'm gonna give you some tips and things that you can focus on to increase that retention rate of students over time, and that's the use of spaced practice. The second thing that Ebbinghaus found in his research and that has been backed up by other studies is that multiple exposures to a topic also reduces the rate of forgetfulness. After being exposed to a topic multiple times, the initial drop is not so rapid and that baseline of retention ends up being much higher over a period of time. The more and more frequent a student is exposed, the more and more this effect comes into play. Due to this finding and its replication in other studies, educators have noticed the importance of these multiple exposures and the importance of spaced practice. Now at a very basic level to implement this in the class, Room, just ensure that students are exposed to the same topic multiple times throughout a unit of work. Now you might be thinking, Mark, there is absolutely no way I can fit any more stuff into my unit or term planners. And trust me, I hear you. The Australian math curriculum is jam packed and we barely get through it every single term or unit. And so I'm not advocating that you need extra lessons available to reteach stuff. I'm gonna give you in this next section, a few simple practical strategies that you can incorporate 
incorporate into the lessons you've already planned in order to re-expose those students to these topics again. Now, the first strategy that I like to use because it's the most effective and least time consuming is the use of entry tickets. The goal of an entry ticket is to give students a brief moment at the start of the lesson, maybe five minutes while you're getting prepared. Notice that we're killing two birds with one stone there. While you're doing the role or whatever it is you're doing, students can be practicing a question or two from a topic they have previously studied. This time would normally be wasted at the start of a lesson. So this is a great opportunity to maximize the amount of time your students are learning in your classroom and it's a great way to warm up for the start of the lesson. So the way we like to incorporate it at our school is through implementing these space practice questions on our learning management system, QLearn. It's a statewide program that's being rolled out and it's effectively just the way that we host all of the lessons that we create, all of the videos that we post, anything that we do for the students we put on QLearn and these questions at the start of the lesson are no exception. Now entry tickets do not have to be this formal. They don't have to be built in and they can be used on the fly. If you're starting a lesson, maybe just think back a week or two ago and think about the topics that you taught and chuck one of those questions up on the board. It doesn't have to be super detailed, so you don't need to have prepared a big long work solution. All you have to do is put the question up and get the students rethinking about the topics that they may be on the cusp of forgetting about. One final recommendation for implementing entry ticket questions is through an app like Quizzes. The Quizzes app can tell students immediately whether they got it right or wrong. You can give them feedback in the app about what the correct answer is and why they may not have chosen it and you can get a report at the end of the lesson. This can guide your formative uh, judgments about how the students are going and see, did they get that topic you taught one, two, three weeks ago? If you'd like a more detailed version of how to use quizzes, I've created a video on it. Click on the card up above. Now, before I jump into the second recommendation, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you click the like button. It really helps me out a lot. And it also tells YouTube that my videos are helping you become a better teacher. Also comment down below if you've used entry tickets in the past. And in particular, have you tried incorporating them with space practice in mind. If you have, let us know. If you haven't, let me know if you're going to try it out. The second strategy I recommend is called lag homework. And as the name implies, lag homework is homework that you give students, but on a delay. So the homework that you give them is related to previous units of work that they've studied, thus the spaced practice. This one's great if you've got a bit more time on your hands to create the artifact of the lag homework schedule to give the students, because it can give them an idea of what it is like to study and what it is like to implement space practice. They can visually see where they're studying and what they're studying, and this can help them structure further units of work down the line when you may not be their teacher. And the final strategy that I recommend is one called a brain dump. Now I love the brain dump and I use it every single term with every single class because it is so effective in my experience. A brain dump is where you give students a little bit of time, say five minutes, to recall anything and everything they can about a specific topic or unit of work. I particularly like to use this strategy a week or so before they have an exam because it gives them the opportunity to see what they know and also see what they don't know and hence would need to study. It incorporates the element of space practice because you're getting students to revise and revisit content that they learnt previously and in conjunction with your entry tickets and your lag homework, the students should be really good at this task. One extra bonus tip I like to add is that after the students have spent five minutes by themselves without any resources by the way, writing down everything they can remember about a topic. I like to give them a couple of minutes, maybe two or three to collaborate with students around them in order to write down anything that they've missed. I also like to get the students to do this in a different color than what they wrote the original information down with because it serves as a visual reminder what they really knew, okay, what they did in the first five minutes and what they need to work on, which is the stuff that they got from their peers. It also encourages collaboration in the classroom, which is always a good thing. So once the students have done it individually and they've done it in collaboration, I like to go through and just show the students everything that they need to know in this unit of work or in this topic of work. I really like this activity because you hear exclamations from students constantly like, oh yeah, that's right, I, I remember studying that. And that's a really, really great tool because it serves to remind them one more time that yes, that is something that they need to know. 
So those three things, entry tickets, lag homework, and brain dumps are three ways that you can incorporate space practice into your regular routine as a teacher. There's no extra time that you need to create within the unit or the term. To incorporate them, you need five minutes at the start of a lesson for an entry ticket. You need to have time to create a lag homework schedule, which yes, can take time, but it might save you time down the line so you don't need to think about what homework to assign. And with the brain dumps, they're a great way to start off your revision. They can target the revision to specific students because the student individually knows what they need. Both the entry tickets and the lag homework can be done through the quizzes platform. They are not sponsoring this video. I just think it's a really good program and I use it all the time in my teaching. If you want to check it out, click on the card over here. Otherwise, click on the one below for a YouTube recommendation. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.